Cheers. I'm a little bit sweaty because I did cardio today, so I'm chilly. It's yicky. But yicky. So I have my jacket on and my hat on, hmm. and it's snowing. How are yeah. you today? I'm doing okay. Yeah? Yeah. How was your workout? Workout was pretty good. Yeah? Uh, did back and um, abs. Okay. And I did some stretching. Okay. So that was good. I rode the exercise bike. Yes, I saw you there, pedaling, getting up on your legs and saying, I'm going to get this mountain. Yep, I did. There was a woman there. That she just sent me a friend request, um, I guess, this week or late last week. And she came up to me in the gym and she's like, I didn't know that you were that person. And she talked to me for like 40 minutes while I was trying to ride the bike, which was kind of funny. Huh. But, you know, that's fine. Um, what are you having for breakfast? I am having, surprisingly enough, oatmeal. And with my oatmeal, I have my usual uh, blueberries, bananas, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, hemp seeds, chia seeds, spirulina. Did I say hemp seeds already? You did. And um, you threw in some um, flax seed. Flax seed. So I'm good to go. I failed to put my oatmeal out last night. I thought about it at 3 a.m., did not get up and put it out, and then mm -hmm. I didn't do it before we left for the gym. So I have to eat Russ's oatmeal this morning, his rolled oats. I don't know how you're going to survive. <laughs> so. Um, I've got it cooking, but I'm, I'm, which means I'm kind of going a little bit rose today. I put some uh, almond milk in it. I put some blueberries and some cinnamon, and then I'm gonna, I have I bought some organic applesauce because I made corn muffins that called for it. And so since I have organic unsweetened applesauce, I thought mm, that might be good in oatmeal, so I'm gonna throw that in there. There you go. So. Um, I wanted to show you guys a new book that I picked up at the library. I haven't started reading it yet, but I wanted to show it to you. Um, it's called Fat Chance, and it's um, Beating the Odds Against Sugar, Processed Food, Obesity, and Disease by Robert L. Lustig, MD. And um, it looks really interesting because it talks, the very first part of it, which is all that I've read, it talks about how we've been told that we're uh, fat and sick because we eat too much and we don't have good willpower. And I've talked to you guys before about how that's not the case. It's because food's been engineered um, to be calorie rich, volume right. dense. And so we eat it because it's yummy, but it doesn't fill us up and it doesn't feed our cells. And then we eat, we end up eating too much of it. And we, and we talked about it the other day where when you do finally go into a plant-based diet and you decide to give it a shot, it takes like three weeks for your taste buds to change. Because yep. right now your taste buds are all geared towards sugars and fats and salts. And when people first come over and they eat plants with us, they always, you know, they're looking for the salt. They're looking because they feel like right. it's bland. Right. But once your taste buds get used to it, it actually is very flavorful. Yes. The problem is if you don't commit and you're kind of half um, with your foot on one side and half with your foot on the other side of the fence, um, your taste buds never get a chance to adjust. Right, right. So that's one challenge. But yeah, I'll let you know what this, how what I think of this book when I get a chance to to read it. So in my um, class, one of my classes that I took for the certification in plant-based nutrition, there was a, a discussion in there about how more than 50% of adults in the United States think it's easier to figure out their taxes than to figure out what's healthy to eat. And um, Chris, I saw your comment that you don't necessarily agree with that. Um, and obviously, because we've done so much research, for us, it's like, well, why way, way rather try to figure out what to eat than do my taxes? Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I saw, I his, I saw this to, comment go by too. Yeah. I pay somebody to do my taxes. <laughs> That's right. Um, but I think I wanted to talk to you because I know we kind of experienced that on Thursday when we did our speaking engagement. There were a lot of questions from people about, well, what do you eat and what about this and what about that? Right. One of the questions we got is when we started on this diet, because we were eating so many whole food carbs, did we gain weight first? Because people associate carbs with, with weight, weight gain, gain, which is bizarre. Which is but, so sad. Yeah. Like it's just, it's. We've talked before about how the the mighty carb has been given, been done a disservice by being lumped in with processed carbs because they're not the same thing. One is food, the other one's not. Right. And the, I'm saying and the carbohydrate is the one is the thing your body needs the most. Mm -hmm. Right, eighty percent of your diet should be starches. Right. You know, and vegetables and fruits and, uh, you know, all green. All the know, yummy stuff. All the yummy stuff, you know, and, um, you know, but all these diets. And it's funny to me that uh, In I a think. a sad kind of way. Is, yeah, that, that, that they're all, Essel's, Dr. Esseltine, Esseltine and Dr. Campbell and McGregor and, I mean, McDougall and Gregor. They all say the same thing is that we're conditioned, um, you know, about the um, Atkins diet. 
right? I mean, the Atkins How diet. How did that become the norm? Gets recreated every six months. The paleo. Right. They, they reinvent it by calling it something different, but it's basically the Atkins diet re, uh, remarketed to make more money off of it. Right. You know, and and uh, was it, it was, I believe Dr. Esselstyn had talked about originally when he was talking about, um, he talked about how the, the Atkins diet was just horrific for you. And the Atkins people came after him. I think that was McDougal. Was it McDougal? I think it was McDougal. And they came after him with threatening him with lawsuits and, you know, assist, um, cease and assist, and assist uh, whatever. Assist orders, Thank yeah. you. And he basically, he responded by posting Article a public rebuttal, right? Publicly about all the science and all the research, and, and they for, basically just apparently, fortunately, if you have science on your side, they they decide they, not to. They see can't you. really come after you, right? And so basically, they just dropped it and went bankrupt. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you know, um, but so the the question is, and that's something I get a lot. I've had different people like you know we did we have our survey up, and we one of the questions I ask is what is your biggest challenge, and a lot of times people are writing on there, I don't really know what to eat, right. you know. Is grain good for me? Is grain not good for me? Should I avoid gluten? Should I not avoid gluten? And that was a question we got on Thursday as yep, well. Exactly. So here's my take on gluten. If you've been diagnosed with celiac disease, please, please, please avoid gluten. It's right. bad for you. It's diagnosed bad for you. Right. Um, there are a lot of people who are not celiac but do have a gluten sensitivity. Right. And they've done some research on that. And... <sighs> There are people, so sometimes when they do research, they give them a gluten pill or a non-gluten pill, so you can't tell which is which. And um, some people do actually have a sensitivity, even though there's no um, celiac. Right. So if you have a problem with gluten, try eating maybe elk, elk corn, elk, what's it called? There's another kind of wheat, I think elk corn wheat, and there's know. Ezekiel bread. Let me read Chris's comment here because she's asking us. What's healthy to eat when you're suffering from flu symptoms? Yeah, I can, um, I can, I'll look into that. Pretty yeah. much feed your body well and it'll, it'll heal yeah. well. That's what but I would when think. you have the flu and you're throwing up, yeah. that's kind of hard to do. It's kind of hard to do. Um, but let's, let, we'll talk about that um, at another time because I don't want to get sidetracked from okay. talking about gluten right now. But thank you for your question, Chris. I definitely will have. Yes, that, what Laura wrote. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That we. And so, so those who can't see it, it's basically E I C H O M is the alternative wheat. And so there's the new wheats, which are almost all of them are GMO, right. which means they're Roundup ready, which you can't change one thing about wheat and not change other things about wheat. Like that's the nature of how things grow. Right. And so I personally, and this is my opinion, feel like things that are Roundup ready, which means they have Roundup sprayed on them and they live, and then they uptake that and put it in their seeds because they store whatever they uptake in their seeds, that that causes issues with the gut. I mean, how can it not? How, right. how can we not have issues with our system with stuff that's meant to kill other plants? That's all right. Thank you, Thanks, Laura. Laura. Laura corrected her spelling, I guess. El it is Elkhorn. El yeah. And on, on Inkhorn, Inkhorn. Is that, whatever. Whatever. Look, what on, she wrote. look on the post, you'll see it. <laughs> um, but so the thing is, is, if you have issues with wheat, that's real for you. And so right. I recommend either changing the kind of wheat you have to one that's um, organic, so it's not GMO, it's not Roundup ready, it's not full of that, that uh, herbicide, and then it doesn't have pesticides in it either, and see if that helps. I know when I was eating a healthy standard American diet, I had issues with my gut that symptoms that, that mimics leaky gut syst, uh, syndrome. Right, which we have no. I mean, I don't know, but I don't can't speak for you, but I have no more bloatedness. Even when I tell you at night, oh, I ate too much today, I'm full. I don't have that uncomfortable bloated. You're just full. I'm just full. I can feel that my stomach's got no more room left in it. You know, which is a different feeling. It's yeah. not as bad of a feeling. So, um, you know. Wheat products, barley, all those things, rye, that do have gluten in them, if you have a sensitivity, you know, don't eat those. Eat right. other things. But if you don't have a sensitivity, don't avoid them because it's popular to do so. Right. Like, that, yeah. that's a little bit of a silly thing to do. Don't avoid a, a, a great source of food because it's popular to do so. So I think right. that creates some confusion is the whole gluten market. And gluten-free products are, are advertised as healthy but if you look at a processed gluten product, it's loaded usually with sugar because they have right. to offset the taste. So you know, be aware of that. And and we we well not we Russ has started making our bread, 
So oh, wait, let me show. Oh, he wants to. He has one that's rising that we're going to bake today. This so. was only about what would you say? Maybe that was the very bottom. Three quarters of an inch in the bowl when I when I set it to rise. And look at it now. Look at it now. Oh. That is so awesome. So we'll we'll put that in a we'll put it in the oven, in the um, Dutch oven with the lid on it for a half hour and then 15 minutes to lid off. And it's great. People yeah. are always shocked when we eat bread, but we yeah. do every week we eat bread. Yeah. So absolutely. So that that's something. If, if you're not gluten intolerant and you're not celiac, find stuff that works for you, but eat organic. And we've said that before about corn and soy as well. We avoid soy mostly. We don't yeah. eat any We're tofu. We're just not a fan. I mean, we'll and have some in miso soup when we, when we, the rare time we'll go out. Right. You know, we did mention about the, uh, we went out for uh, sushi, vegetarian yes, sushi, vegetarian sushi, which is all basically vegetables. Vegetables and, was, and rice. It was awesome. It was good. Um, we had the noodles, the uh, rice noodles. Rice noodles. Yeah. I mean, it was finally to find a place that we're not coming out of feeling like, oh my god, all this garbage we just put in our system. So that was fun. That was nice. Yeah. yeah. But when it comes to you know finding things that are healthy to eat, we all know that plants are good for us, especially if they're whole plants. Right. Like that part isn't news. The question is how do you figure out what to eat and so what i've started what i've started doing is i just cook you guys know that i cook big big things of food so maybe rather than looking at all these different new fad diets we just all go back to eating real whole food and i right. guess that's our goal that is our goal yeah is to help people eat real whole food right. and and not feel like there's nothing left for me to eat and i'm in a lot of forums that are um vegetarian and vegan and people talking about how to make the switch and they're always looking to you know what can I do that mimics this or that or what can I do that replaces this or that well what about rather than trying to just replace or mimic the current unhealthy foods that that you're eating what if you start eating something different what if you try new foods yes. and I know that that the concept of that is a little bit strange and I feel like we're all like children. We're like, I don't like that. Did you try it? <laughs> That's no, what you get I don't from. like it. <laughs> That's what people, I mean, they're, the, the responses are just like what a child would say when you try to give them something new to eat. Right. It is, exactly. And so that that's interesting. But So I would say eating healthy is not as difficult as doing your taxes because the laws don't change. <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, and there's science about how to eat healthy. There's so much research out there. And I know that... Most people come to me and they're like, Robin, there's no way I'm going to read all the books and the science and the articles and watch the documentaries that you have. It's just not going to happen. Good news. On our website, there'll be Robin's notes and quotes. <laughs> so you don't have to watch all that stuff. You can just catch her little uh, blurbs, the, 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 the gems that she pulls out of the books that she thinks My is, bullet points. is worthy, uh, worthy and of we'll knowledge. And there's videos that I'm editing that are going to go up on it too. Right. So, But the point that I'm making is, what is healthy stays stable, and that is whole food plants. Right. And that, that is the starches, the grains, the potatoes, the things that we love, the things that we consider comfort foods are what's healthy for us. And those are easy to eat. They're cheap to eat. Um, the thing is, and so I was asked, somebody asked me about polenta. So mm. polenta is processed, obviously. I would put that in the realm with flour. It's whole. So I mean, it's ground, but it's the whole plant or you know, the whole seed. So that's good. But, you know, it is processed. The bigger issue, though, is what are you putting on it? That's the key. Because that's what I see. You know, people have a potato and the potato is a great thing. And they put butter, sour cream, and cheese. Chives, <laughs> cheese. Chives aren't bad. But no. yeah. and, the, and bacon. Right. So it's not the potato, but the potato like the, gets the blame. Like the loaded ba um, to, uh, potato the guy ordered when we were at Ted's that time. Yep. I got a plain baked potato and I, put, I asked for vinegar and I put vinegar on it. Um, and then with his meal next to me, the guy sitting right next to me at the bar ordered um, a loaded baked potato. A loaded baked potato, and I wasn't even paying attention. Robin was, and it came back in, and it had everything on it. it had your cheese, it had your bacon, it had. I mean, if it could be bad, it was put on the. It was literally <laughs> put on this potato. And, th and that's what I. That's what we see a lot of is that the base food, the carb, the starch, is a healthy thing. But then if you load it full of animal products. It makes it unhealthy, and right. for whatever reason, we then decide to blame the starch for right. the fat. Obviously, it was the starch. But and I've told you guys before, your body doesn't store carbs as fat. It stores carbs as glycogen, which is is fuel for that it burns right away. Mm -hmm. So it stores protein and fat as fat, but it doesn't store carbs as fat. Right. So 
We definitely, the questions we're getting do say people are very confused about what's healthy. Right. And I showed that picture on Thursday. Um, we have a, a picture I took of a product that has all the healthy words on the front of it. Right. You know, whole grain, it has organic, it has non-GMO, oh, it's gluten-free, gluten -free. has all these great like healthy words. They're chips. Right. Like, and they're not food. And they're not food. They're no. a processed food fragment thing. I right. don't know. Half the ingredients on there you can't even pronounce. So I think the biggest thing is start eating stuff that is comes out of the ground and right. then it's not confusing. Right. And if you need another reason to do it, it cuts your food bill in half. Literally cut your food bill in half. We spend less on food now, even though we're buying a lot of different things that we that specialty we never... stuff, which has a higher price tag. Mm -hmm. And organic. Speaking, and organic. Yet we're spending because we're not buying the animal products. We're spending like half the money for our food. Laura saying sprouted re wheat breads. Yeah, those are are a good option for for those of us who can't make bread. I'm yeah. among them. I can't make bread. Mm -hmm. But she has somebody who can. So. I have someone who makes bread. I don't follow instructions super well. That's why I cook. I can just throw stuff in the pot. Right. She's constantly saying, "Well, it doesn't call for this, but we have it, so I'm putting it in." <laughs> it turns out well. It most does. Of the time. All the time, in my opinion. So if you're feeling, you know, lost or confused or you don't know what to eat, you're not alone. It's a really common problem in the United States because there is so much bad information out there. Mm -hmm. um, and there's so much noise. And we hear it too. We just, because we've educated ourselves so extensively, we're able to pick through it. If you haven't read as much science as I have, I can completely understand why it would be hard. Because, I mean, people come at me all the time. You have to eat meat. It's a complete protein. Uh, <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> that's not the way it works. I mean, yes, it's a complete protein, but that's not the only source of complete protein. A. B, they say, well, it's easier for your body to process. That's true. That's actually not good for your body. Easy makes it makes your body take in more than it needs. Right. And, oh, by the way, it's loaded with fat, saturated fat, and right. cholesterol that you don't need at all. And it has other issues, too. I mean, I forget which doctor was talking about that. It has this, this carcinogenic. And there's no fiber in it. Right, um, elements to it. So. We need to, start, we need to talk, start telling people they need to eat fiber. It's really good for you. Well, just eat whole food plant-based, and you're going to get all get the fiber, fiber you need. It's I mean, that's the you. bottom line. So, yeah, that, that's the issue is that people really staunchly believe that meat is good for them, and, and it's not. So mm -hmm. changing that paradigm is, is a challenge. Is. We're working on it. We're working on it. So if you have questions, if you run into something where you're like, wait, I'm confused, um, you know, you guys are saying this, and I'm hearing that, share it with us. Right. Ask me, because I'm more than happy to kind of share with you why I believe what I believe, right. where I got it, who I read it from, what the study was. What so the not, science says. So basically not hearsay, not words spread from one person to the next. Not, not that, that I made Not up. that, you know, how you line 100 people Telephone. up and tell a story, yes, and walk down the chain, but then it's a whole different story. All right. No, we'll, Robin will definitely get you the the details, the facts, the, the science. I'm not asking you to believe me just because I said no. so. And you still may disagree after that. I mean, you know, sometimes people believe what they want to believe. And, and that's you know, okay. It's and their that's journey. Okay. It's not our job to change their mind. Our job is just to offer information. And if it's useful Offer for information you, and support. That's right. our goal. That's our goal. Yeah. So if you have questions, definitely let us know. Um, thank you so much for being here. We love seeing all of you. I, I like watching your names pop up as yep. you guys pop it's on. Fun. It's a lot of fun. The likes the, and the hearts are great. They right. make us feel. I, I have to say hi, Aunt Matilda. I oh. see her. She popped in. So hi. how are you going? <laughs> um, so please do like and share if you're getting value from these. We, we really appreciate all of you being here, and we want to be able to make as big a difference. Our, our big goal, like I keep saying you, to you, is we want to eradicate heart disease, diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol, and anybody who's decided that those diseases aren't for them, right. and they're interested in their journey to health going away from those diseases. That's right. our goal. So we need you to like and share if you're, if you're getting value. Absolutely. Do you have anything you wanted to I add? I think we've said all we had to say for today. All right. I'm going to go eat my mushy rolled oatmeal because I forgot <laughs> she, to. Uh, she just had my oatmeal. Mm, oh, my humanity. Forgot. I know. It's sad. <laughs> I'll do better. <laughs> okay. And so with that, we will say eat real food, not too much, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great have day, Have a good guys. one. We'll see you tomorrow.